probably seen me write this often, but you've never heard me say it. Cheers. It's good to see you. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, July 18th. Now, we're going to remain true to the theme of this show. We are searching for hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I determine what has potential, of course I do, it's my show, <laughs> by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that have heat. I'm looking for a chart that looks like it's ready to run. It's got a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in, or it's been running for weeks or months and just won't stop. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummage around through their news presses and their filings, looking for a catalyst to either get that stock going or to keep it moving. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you each day. The first stock we're taking a look at, I sincerely like. I am excited about this company. This is Core One Labs, ticker CLABF. This is a psychedelic company. Yes, LSD, acid, psilocybin. They created it and they manufacture it. Yes, I said created, because psilocybin is a natural ingredient found in nature. It's in the public domain. Nobody can patent it which means no company would be protected. Anybody could make what they're making. So everybody is trying to find a way to make psilocybin synthetically equivalent to the natural psilocybin. And this company's cracked the egg and they've done a lot more than that. They've got catalysts. We've got two pieces of news this month and they've got a hot chart. Oh, I look at that chart, I drool. It is a perfect breakout setup, just waiting to run. The only thing we're missing right now is volume. There's not much volume there. And it is not because this company's under the radar. She's just not getting a lot of attention and love right now. Most psychedelic companies are not off anybody's radar. Everybody's been waiting and watching to see who gets what patents because this is gonna be a huge market and there's only so many ways that we know of right now to create psilocybin. So I think now is a real good time to take a look at Clab F. Clab F finished today at about 37 and a half cents with almost 8% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. We refer to this as the better tier. It's better because you got to audit your financials if you want to be up here. That's great for us. We get fundamentals. Now I can tell, is the company making money or are they losing money? It makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got both those green ticks I'm always harping to you about. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. There's a lot of important information being validated behind the scenes represented by these green ticks. And that's what you want if you're trading stocks on the OTC. Problem with the OTC is transparency, lack of information. So whenever you can get validated information, take it. This looks good. So let's see what this company's about, taking a closer look at their description. Core One Labs is a research and technology company focused on life sciences and on bringing psychedelic medicines to the market through novel delivery systems and psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. See, this is going to be done through clinics. You're not just going to come in and pick up your acid, <laughs> your tablet, and go home. No, no, no. You're going to stay in the clinic and you're going to be guided on this trip by a therapist to make sure you don't have a bad trip. Now, I don't know how much acid they're going to give, but it's micro doses, so there shouldn't be any problems. But the truth of the matter is LSD, psilocybin, is a magnifying glass. First thing it does is magnify your mood. Whatever mood you're in becomes bigger. If you're happy, you're over the moon. If you're sad, it's melancholy. And if you're mad, you could be dangerous. And if you're scared, you can get paranoid. So it's very important to have someone guide your trip. Once you get to where you're going, you found your right mood, doors start opening up and you can break out the microscope and start seeing things like you've never seen them before and understand them and retain them. LSD has a great way of opening doors in our minds to connect thoughts and emotions. And that's what we really need to balance ourselves. And they found lots of uses for this. Helping people with post-traumatic stress syndrome, alcoholism, helping people to cure traumas in their life. So it's going to be big and it's not going to be cheap. The company's developed a patent pending thin film oral strip which dissolves instantly when placed in the mouth and delivers organic molecules in precise quantities to the bloodstream. 
maintaining excellent bioavailability. With this technology, the company intends to further develop its IP technology to focus on delivering psychedelic molecules with an initial focus on psilocybin. They just cracked this egg. They were working with psilocybin, which is very close, but not the same. Now they've got it. Core One also holds an interest in walk-in medical clinics, which maintain a database of over 200,000 patients combined. Through research and development in these clinics, including the integration of intellectual property related to psychedelic treatments and novel drug therapies, the company intends to work towards regulatory approval for research that advances psychedelic-derived treatments for mental health disorders. There's a lot of companies pushing forward, and the government's pushing forward. The FDA is pushing forward. Nobody is holding this back. Now, did you see how many patients they've got here? 200,000. The average cost per session is anywhere from 170 to just under 400 bucks. So average it out, say $200. And most months, you go three times to four times a month. Believe that, once a week, really. So let's just say $600. Well, $600 times 200,000, I do believe that comes out to $1.2 billion a month. A month for selling LSD? Yeah, selling drugs has always been profitable. So let's take a look at that relative volume right now. And she's had a tumble today. She's normally been doing 5,200 shares. Oh God, how I'm tempted to say she's under the radar. And today she barely did 2,000 shares. So she's not got a lot of volume right now. What is her share structure? I don't know what the float is, but I know it's going to be under 46 million. That's not a great float, but it darn sure isn't a bad float. Financials for Core One. Is this company actually making money yet? They are making money, but they're not paying anything for it. So I'm thinking they're probably not actually selling the product. They're doing more consultations or something. They had $478,000 at the end of 2022. I know that's thousands because they tell me to put three more zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. Looking at her quarterly income, it's gotten stronger. Not the strongest. She had 341000 back in 2021. Almost 200000 but again, she's not paying anything for it. I'm not real sure how she's making her money right now because it doesn't sound like they're actually selling it. They just cracked the egg and they're getting ready to commercialize it. So I don't think it's the drug they're selling. Looking at the disclosures for the company, we've got nothing here since 2020 and all of their financials are caught up, so let's dive into that news. So we've got lots of news here about them making progress, but it's the last two pieces or the first two pieces of news that I want to look at. I have scoped back to April here. The company completes successful synthetic production of psilocycin. You see that, psilocycin. Not the same thing as psilocybin. Uh, the company is making further progress commercializing and initiating development of psychedelic pro-drugs. You know what a pro-drug is? Pro-drugs are drugs that help you without any side effects. No side effects at all. They just empty out of your system. They don't leave any traces behind. They don't make you bloat. You don't get dry eyes. Pro-drugs. We're loving them. Core One in talks with multiple companies to supply psilocybin. Now it's psilocybin. They moved over. FDA's draft guidance. The FDA has got all sorts of rules about this already, and the company is inside that parameter, so everything is good. They are working with countries all around the world. They're talking to people everywhere, not just here in the United States. We're not the only open-minded country. So let's take a look at these two pieces of news. One came out on July 7th. The other one came out July 11th. The first one, Core One Labs is pleased to announce that its wholly owned subsidiary, Vulcan Biotechnologies, filed a patent under the Patent Cooperation Treaty. This is huge. A patent is normally for one country. You gotta get one for America, one for Canada. Well, this PCT, covers 150, 151 countries. So they can work in all those countries and their products are protected. Nobody can duplicate what they do. Go ahead and re reverse engineer it. You can't use it. 
This is for international protection of its novel production of techniques for biosynthesized psilocybin. Vulcan's filing of this international patent is a monumental step in the patenting of its revolutionary biosynthetic psilocybin production method. This filing marks a major milestone in the company's progression towards becoming an industry front runner, first mover in the psychedelic space as a leading producer of psychedelic drugs. Given Core One's proprietary production systems, having the ability to yield 100% pure psilocybin through an extremely cost and time efficient method. This current market price of reliable compliant psilocybin produced by old fashioned synthetic and extraction production methods ranges between $7,000 and $10,000 per gram. Making it the old fashioned way, they're getting $7,000 to $10,000 a gram. And I guarantee you folks, there's probably, oh goodness, a thousand doses in a gram, maybe 10,000 doses. These are micro doses that they are giving to people. The company's novel recumbent system can cut production costs significantly with increased efficiency, which could, as a result, lead to substantially lower market price of their drug and potentially transform psychedelic based mental health care worldwide. Now, maybe that $170 to $400 price is going to come down because it's cheaper to make. You know, you had to actually get the plant and extract it from the plant. Now they're growing it, brewing it like beer or plants. They just keep cloning it. It just keeps coming and coming. Once they start growing it, it just keeps producing. And they can grow as much as they want without any problems. That other piece of news, oh, before I jump into that, we're talking about patents. Patents are very, very important. Well, there is a problem right now. I quit following this because I thought this company, Compass Pathways, had worked a monopoly. A couple years ago, they got a patent for psilocybin, as close to natural psilocybin as you can possibly get. And as soon as they did that, people got upset, actually took it to court, and that's what this article is about took it to court and fought that patent, said it's in the public database, it's in the domain, it shouldn't be. Well, the Supreme Court disagreed with them, and now they've got eight patents. It is as close to the natural as you can have. So anybody who was using that is out of the game. So this company's come up with their own, and now they're going to be seriously fighting Compass Pathways. And I'm telling you what, folks, this is going to be a huge government-dominated industry. It is going to be a health revolutionary drug, unlike any other drugs that we have. That last piece of news is what got me really excited. The company is pleased to announce that they have incorporated a state-of-the-art high-density fermenting and bioprocessing equipment platform into their proprietary biosynthetic psilocybin production method, significantly optimizing and scaling up capacity and product yields while also increasing purity of the product. The addition of the platform is a significant step towards Vulcan optimizing its operations to meet the growing demand for psychedelic compounds to be used in pharmaceutical drug formulations. Core One's most efficient path to revenue growth is the thorough sales of the psychedelic compounds and scaling up production, which will allow the company to move towards achieving these goals. The reduction cost and lead times to produce this biosynthetic psilocybin utilizing a new platform cannot be overstated, as the improvements are extremely significant and will enable Vulcan to proceed with commercial production on a large scale much sooner than would have been possible without the new equipment. They're ready to go, folks. They're going to be able to make as much as they want, and the world wants this stuff. And did you see the cost? Now, I don't know if they're going to be able to sell it cheaper or more, but right now it's going for seven to $10,000 a gram. How much do you think they produce in one batch? <sighs> wow. And when you're growing it, it doesn't take a lot of money. Once it starts growing, all you got to do is maintain it. So the expense to produce it is a lot less than the old-fashioned way, if you will. Now let's go take a look at the other hot aspect of this stock, the chart. I told you it was a juicy chart. Look at that. There's moisture on my screen. This is CLAB-F, ticker CLABF Core 1 Labs. 
and we're going to be doing all of our charting on thinkorswim this is the free trading platform you get from td ameritrade so looking at core one lab six month four hour view we got a high in december of 82 cents and a long drawn out fall to a low of 23 cents at the very beginning of this month now you can see she fell all the way down and then started to level off right here and look where she fell she fell on top of the 200 day haul now i've been talking about this here recently because it keeps popping up and i see it in a lot of charts most people don't use this sma 200 haul it is very much like a 200 day sma it takes 200 days of prices averages them all together and then gives more credence to current prices well in a lot of charts i've been looking at here recently the price is paying a lot of respect to this line it's one i need to watch and here you can see she landed on this and she laid on that there's no other line there the 20s above her the 50s above her the nine she's right in the middle of that she is on top of the 200 haul during covid i did not have a 50-day sma until covid because bloomberg started talking about how all the markets had settled on the 50-day sma and it's like what the 50-day i had not heard of it not up until that point and it's like well if everybody else is looking at the 50-day i got to throw that on my charts if i don't it's like driving up to a red light we're all looking at that light but i want to look at the crosswalk light it's not gonna work so i have to follow the same signals everybody else is following so i put the 50 day on my charts well right now for some reason a lot of the charts are paying heed to the 200 day haul so she hit a low here came back up to that haul and then worked her way over the 50 hit her head on the 200 came down to the 50 again not losing any strength just coming back home ready for a second try and she has not only broke through it she is sitting on top of it right now she is just sitting there so proud of herself but notice we have no volume right now volume has been getting very light through all of this and she's ready to break out oscillators say exactly that look our ppo is now bouncing up and pushing away just like our MACD is. RSI is over 55. We're up at 62. Everything looks good. We just need some volume. 20 day, one hour view. There's that low bubble of 23 cents. Again, here is our 200 day haul. She is paying heed to this one. Jumped off of it went to her 200 day sma and now she's bouncing off of that one and she's launched herself put herself above the 20 and every single one of these bars has a higher low than the one before them that is perfect i look for at least three of these in a row before i think a trend is changing that looks like it's changing to me we got to bounce off of our ppo right here a percentage price oscillator which is just like the macd you read them the same they look the same both looking good rsi is still at 62 looking at our five day five minute so she was going a little sideways here she dipped she dipped and on this last dip she has pushed herself up crossing the 20 on the five day minute everything is looking like she's decided to change trend and that's all we're looking for because right now she is on top of the four hour 200 day sma which is where i really measure my strength i make my plays down here on the shorter time frames but i watch the strength on those bigger ones and right now she is just getting ready to take off so things are looking really good c-l-a-b-f i think it's going to make us money in the short run but i guarantee you with that patent if they've got psilocybin and they can start commercializing it oh folks this company could be making big bucks I showed you 1.2 billion dollars a month if everybody in those clinics was actually coming in that's exciting revenues bet you know this stock already this is nightscope ticker KSCP she deals with robots security robots a lot like AITX heck maybe the two of them ought to get together and merge now her chart is extremely hot she's already broke out she's climbing she's taking bounces here and there but the volume is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger now news wise she hasn't got any hot big catalysts she's just got constant news coming out about this place and that place buying up their robots 
Business is getting better. They're growing. The train is moving. So if you want to catch a ride, now's the time to jump on. KSCP, she finished the day at $1.77, just a little over 6.5% gains. Now, their description tells us here that Nightscope is an advanced public safety technology company that builds fully autonomous security robots and blue light emergency communication systems that help protect the places people live, work, study, and visit. Nightscope's long-term ambition is to make the United States of America the safest country in the world. I like that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, nice. Her average is like 6 million shares a day. Today, she did more than double that at 12.5 million. That's what we like to see. Like I said, her volume has been increasing. Share structure. It's not too bad. We've got 44 million outstanding shares. That means our float isn't going to be more than that. Like the last stock. It's not a great float, but it's definitely not a bad float. Financials for the company. Well, as you can see, they've been growing, and they've grown fast here in the last year. They've jumped from 3.4 million up to 5.6 million. Now, they are running at a loss right now. They've got to tweak that formula, but you can't make any money unless you're selling goods. Then you can start to work it out. Quarterly, what do we got going here? They're increasing revenues. Every single quarter has gotten bigger than the one before it, and they're bringing their losses down real fast. Look, they did $2.3 million the last quarter of 2022, and about half of that was lost. Down here, they've only lost 213,000. So they're shrinking that number. They're tweaking that formula. Looking at our disclosures, we've got two recent 8Ks. I looked at them and we do need to look at these. So this one came out telling us that on June 29th, Nightscope issued a press release announcing that it had extinguished, espunged, gotten rid of some debt, $6 million worth. They did this by converting notes into class A common shares. That means more shares went on the market, but that means they got rid of $6 million worth of debt. They tell us here the notes have been paid down. However, associated warrants to the purchases will add 1.1 million shares of stock at $3.25 activation. So we've got warrants out there. They haven't added any shares yet, but when the price hits $3.35, then they can sell the warrants if they want. A lot of people are going to still hold them because they want bigger profits. And we'll get another 1.1 million shares. Not a big deal. The other 8K, this is a big deal. And initially, it sounds like bad news, but it's actually good as far as I'm concerned. As previously disclosed on April 4th, Nightscope entered into a common stock purchase agreement with B. Riley Principal Capital. The company had the right to sell Riley up to $100 million worth of newly issued shares of the company's common Class A common stock. On June 28th, the company gave notice to B. Riley to terminate the purchase agreement. Now that sounds bad. What? We just lost a $100 million investment? Why? But think about it. They were going to put $100 million worth of new shares on the market. We've got 42 million, 43 million right now at the current price of roughly $1.25. We would have been looking at 75 million more shares. That would have been over 100% dilution. So they'd have gotten money, the company, and we'd have got diluted by, well, too much. So that's off the table now. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's jump on over to that news. I've gone back only this month because it's just news upon news about them selling stuff. Right here, just at the beginning of this month, Georgia State University chooses Nightscope reseller ts and to supply and install K1 blue light towers and call boxes at the downtown Atlanta campus. Community College places order for 15 K1 blue light towers. Here was a new addition to their robots. Nightscope announces automated gunshot detection. Yeah, everybody can hear the shot, but where did it come from? Well, these things have got radars, they've got sonars, they can actually hone in on where that noise came from. 
you know, a robot can be walking that direction and looking that direction, but its radar can tell that something is moving behind it where a security guard would have no idea if a sneaky thief was back there. So these are going to be doing a lot better work than people. Sorry, I don't mean to knock people. And then our last piece of news, the one I want to take a look at. Nightscope announces sales to military base, mall, and university. This just came out today. Three different purchases. A Nightscope reseller expanded the use of K-1 retrofit kits at Nellis Air Force Base. There are now 20 competitor products that have been retrofitted with Nightscope's modern technologies at Nellis providing extremely cost-effective systems that use cellular and satellite communications with optional solar power to serve the women and the men of our armed forces and their families. So now they're taking equipment from other companies and putting in their technology so it's smarter and better. That's smart. They tell us here that Santa Rosa Mall in Baymont, Puerto Rico, signed a contract for one K-5 autonomous security robot that will patrol indoors. The mall's management company has a second indoor mall and 16 outdoor retail properties, so we have the potential of more business there. And finally, a 130-year-old Connecticut University is expanding its use of the Nightscope technologies with six additional K-1 blue light emergency phones. As I said, it's not a huge catalyst, it's just business as usual, but it's coming out constantly. You saw the news, that was just this month's news. I didn't even go back any further. Business is getting better and better for AITX and this company, but this company seems to have a lot more volume than AITX. Let me show you what that looks like on the chart. Yeah, I'd say she's had a change of trend. This is KSCP Nightscope Bank. That's a six-month, four-hour view with our high bubble virtually six months ago in November at $3.65. And from November till the beginning of June, she fell, hitting a low of $0.36 cents here. Now, it was at the beginning of June that the volume started to come into the picture, probably because the 200-day SMA has gotten very close. Then she pushed herself up over the 50. That's when the volume started coming in, and boom, she broke out. Not a test. She just took off. One bounce, and she launched. She put herself on the nine-day SMA immediately and took off, hitting a high here of $2.30, starting down here at $0.40. Cents. You're looking at 500% gains in the last two weeks. Now, after hitting this high, she did pull back. I expect that because look at how far away this nine-day SMA is from that 20. It's too far. Think of it as a rubber band stretching. Sooner or later, it's got to pop back, and that's all it did. It fell back to the 20. It snagged it and stretched towards the 50, and then boing, came back to the 20. And as you can see, she is on top of the 20, and she's actually on top of the nine-day SMA. She's got lots of volume, lots of momentum. The only thing that looks weak are the oscillators. They actually look weak right now from this big fall right here, but it looks to me like they're all in the midst of recovery right now. Yeah, it is a projection, but that's what it looks like to me. 20 day, one hour view, not a bad chart. She was on top of the 200, dipped underneath it like a cat getting ready to pounce, crouching down and boink, jumped up onto the 200 and scattered away, and it just launched itself. Now, you can see the price is coming down, respecting the 50-day SMA. That's where she's bouncing. Now, don't pan if it, if it comes underneath. We're looking for the magnet effect. It may come underneath and just keep sticking to it, banging its head. It doesn't want to go down. It wants to get back up, and that's what we see here. We see a fight. Bam, bam, let me in, let me in. Now, it crouches down crouches before it jumps, it needs some momentum, boom, I'm through. You see that? Think of everything in physical terms. It's easier to understand. So it jumped up there, broke it, whew, fell back, but look, it didn't come all the way back down, and now it's getting ready to do that again. And our oscillators say that's what's going on. You can see she's come up to that pink line and just crossing it right now. 
MACD, we're just crossing the signal line, our first green bar coming into the picture, and our oscillator, is a, our uh, RSI is a little low. It's at 53, but it is working its way up. Five day, five minute. It's not a bad chart. I don't like the dip, but as I said, you got to let the chart correct itself or you're going to have a bad fall. We got a low bubble back here of 83 cents and a high of $2.34. That's in four days, folks. That is 300% gains in four days. She took a huge drop here, went sideways, looks like she was waiting for the 200 to come close again. Bink, I'm ready to run. <laughs> she's up on top, she's bounced off the top one time, she's gonna start running. That's the way it looks to me, and the oscillators say that's what's going on. She has got a recovery going on right now. She's going to get up on top of that 50 and start to run. No, I can't promise it, but that's the way it looks to me. My opinion, I'm just sharing it with you. KSCP, business is growing. Every week they've got news about more business. More and more people are paying attention to it, and the price is climbing. And it is regulating itself. Look for those low dips. They're not falls. Make sure you're looking at your SMAs on the big charts. That'll tell you if things have gotten bad. Everything looks good. Gonna need a show of hands here. How many of you remember TOI? Ticker T-O-I? <laughs> That's what I thought. Most of you. Why not? She was surging back in March. Lots of people were watching her. She was running for days, and she was nowhere near the 200. She was way under it, so it wasn't like a breakout, but she was running nonetheless. She had about 100% gains under her belt by the time we looked at it, and that was it. She took a significant dip after that. Then, when the 200 got close enough, she broke out again. Huge, a 200% run. Then she came back down under the 200, and now we've got a legitimate bona fide breakout. Why do I call it bona fide? Because the last two times she ran, they were surges. They were rockets up and rockets down. This is not a surge, it's not a rocket. It is growing at a steady incline already over the 200 and looking good. Now, she hasn't got any new news or new catalysts. They're doing the same thing they've always been doing, working with their cancer drugs, working with their cancer patient care, and they're doing well. They're making strong revenues. Now, they did have a piece of news come out in June. They are adding AI to their cancer research and their cancer patient care, which I think is tremendous. If you're going to use artificial intelligence, come on. Let's use it where people get the benefits and not just the system. And who knows what AI can do until you let it try. It's a mystery to us. Maybe it can cure cancer. So TOI, she finished the day at 77 and a half cents roughly with about 3% gains. She is a hot penny stock on the NASDAQ. That means you can trade her for free. Trade pre-market, trade after market. Lots of benefits with these penny stocks on the major exchange. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, not good. Lost about two thirds of her volume, dropping from 1.5 million down to under a half a million. And the charts look good? They do, I swear. Share structure for toy. Well, it's about double the last two we looked at, but it's still good. Anything under 100 million is definitely not a problem. We got 75 million here. We know our float isn't going to be any higher than that. Financials for TOI. This is where we spent most of our time in the last video looking at her. She's doing good. As you can see, she has been growing in revenues every single year. 187, 203, 252 million dollars at the end of 2022. And she got to keep 52 million dollars of that. Looking at the quarterly, it's just as good. It is growing every three months, she's doing more money. And this is a brand new quarter. We did not see this the last time we were here. And she's jumped again, another five million. So everything is still looking good. Disclosures for toy. The most recent filing is a nice one. Came out on the 10th of this month, an SC13G. Oh, I love these 13Gs, 13Ds. These are filed whenever they get a new investor, a big one. Somebody that buys so many shares, they actually own a percentage of the company now. So that's exciting news. 
Now let's take a look at the news. So the company's got a lot of news here about their financials because, well, they're proud of them. They're doing really, really well, but they're doing other things as well. I'm back here in May. This is a eye-opening piece of news. TOI patient is first worldwide to be treated with promising therapy for metastatic ovarian cancer. This is big news. It's definitely worth some more due diligence. Another piece that came out in May, the company announces a strategic partnership with Ideology Health to provide customized medical education. Then they made another partnership. This one came out in June. The company and Massive Bio forge partnership to revolutionize cancer care and AI-enabled cancer research. That's what I was just telling you. And I find that very exciting. But that was back over a month ago. We haven't had anything since. But the chart looks strong. This chart is growing. Everything is in, in the right place. So I think we need to look at it, even though we don't have any new news. Looking at ticker TOI, this is a six month, four hour view. Six months ago, our high was $5.41 and we hit a low in June of 33 cents. Now she fell from this high of 5.41 down to about a buck 50. That's right in this zone and she stayed there for quite a while. That's a solid support right there. And then we looked at it right there at that blue line. And the truth of the matter is we looked at it when it was about 62 cents and it went up to 91 cents the next day. There was a 50% gain to be taken away from the video. Then she dribbled back down here to 33 cents in June, had a breakout, jumping all the way up here to almost $1.20. That's almost 300% gains. But that is way too steep to be trying to break out. You get up there, you just slide downhill and fall back down. Thank goodness she landed on her 50-day SMA, was able to bounce right back up onto the 200, which is now flat enough. She's testing it, bouncing on it over and over again, crouched before she was going to jump, and boink, she's off and running. Floating on her 9-day SMA, the 20 isn't too far away from it. Volume is light right now. There isn't a lot of volume, but everything is looking good. Osculators, our PPO is strong. MACD, uh, yep, she's still on top. She looks a little plancid. RSI is at 68. Everything is a little cool, but everything is growing. 20 day, one hour view. So she bounced off the 200 on the one hour, came underneath it, hitting the slow of 48 cents, crouching down and then jumping. She's bouncing off of her 50 day SMA up here and she's holding. She hit a high of 80 cents today and she keeps coming back to that area. Osculators, uh, well, they show everything coming down because the aftermarket bar right there. But up till that point, everything was still climbing. Looking at our five day, five minute. Whoa, that's a beautiful chart. Low bubble in this corner of 59 cents, 80 cents in that corner. She has been above the 200 day SMA, bounced on it once here crouched underneath it so that she could jump another crouch another jump now she's bouncing on top you can tell she's working to climb she isn't looking like she's eager to fall she keeps doing everything she can to climb i like toi she's back in a position of strength and she's got more control of her growth now than she did the last two times so with some patience we might see some very strong growths coming out of toi you know doing business as usual, can be a catalyst. You don't have to have new merger deals, acquisitions, a huge financial. If you are growing steadily, if every quarter you're putting more revenues on the books, that's a catalyst. Two out of the three we looked at today, that's what we're looking at, steady growth. But the other one, that psychedelic company, that could be a big surprise, folks. I do see some gains coming in the short haul. We need that volume, but I am looking down the road with that one. I think psychedelics is going to be a major sector that is going to surprise everybody, a true dark horse. But do your own due diligence. See what you learn. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.